Welcome to Bahamas Educational Express, Social Studies Lesson, Protecting Our Land. In this lesson, you will locate the national parks on a map, explain the aim of the Bahamas National Trust, identify endangered plants of the Bahamas. Our environment is under threat. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the sea we fish, the soil we farm, the forest. Animals and plants that surround us are all in danger. We must all individuals, communities, and nations help to manage our environment and save it for future generations. The Bahamas' environment. We are surrounded by warm, clear seas that are full of life. We have low hills, lakes, swamps, caves, lagoons. We have all of these things in our environment. We have wetlands, tidal creeks, and flats. They are they all provide a rich variety of environments containing many different plants and animals. Our mangroves, our flats, our tidal creeks. We should know that the Bahamas' original environment is disappearing. The original forests that once covered the Bahamas were destroyed long ago. There are not as many species of plants and animals now as they were even a short time ago. It is vital that we save those that remain. The Bahamas National Trust. The trust was set up in 1959 to protect some of these environments, plants, and animals. These plants and animals are in 32 protected areas. The areas of the trust cover some 96,000 hectares. Each of the protected areas is patrolled by trust wardens who make sure that people do not harm or destroy the national habitat. The protected areas are named and indicated on the map. Here is the map. You will notice that in green are the national parks, the protected areas. The blue represent the other protected areas. The aim of the Bahamas National Trust. One, to teach people about conservation. Two, to manage the national parks for the enjoyment of Bahamians and visitors. Three, to preserve our rich historical heritage. Endangered species in our country. Some of the greatest threats to the Bahamas wildlife are plants and animals brought in from other place by people. For example, the Australian pine was introduced to the Bahamas. This 
tree grows to a great height and it has widely spreading branches. The pine needles drop to the ground in a thick layer and few other plants are not able to survive where this tree has become established. Animals that are introduced can also be very destructive. Goats destroy the natural vegetation and cats and rats may prey on ground nesting. Ground nesting birds. Let's go and learn about some of the trees of the Bahamas' forests. The forests were destroyed long ago, but it's still possible to see some of the trees that grow in those forests. Here are just a few examples. The Gamalami, the Mystic, then we have the Cedar, we have the Strongbok, we have the Stopper, the Sea Grape, and we have the Brazilito. The Bahamas National Trust encourages government and private citizens to preserve the following. The hardwood trees such as the lignum vitae, the madeira, the silk cotton, cedar, and others such as the yellow elder, royal ponciana, and a variety of palms. The silk cotton tree, the yellow elder, the sea grape, the cedar, the palm tree, the madeira, the lignum vitae, the royal ponciana, It is important to plant trees. It is great fun to plant a tree and watch it grow. It will provide shade and be a home for birds and insects. It will also make oxygen and help to improve the atmosphere. Plant a tree in your yard if you have space. Schools can also plant some new trees. Trees that grow on one island may not be the best for another island. So ask an expert first. Animals that need our protection. Several animals are described as endangered species and are protected by law. Some of our special behemoth species are described in the slides that follow. The wild, the white crown pigeon, The white crown pigeon is one of the most popular game bird of the Bahamas. It is carefully protected by the Ministry of Agriculture and the Bahamas' National Trust. The opening of the white crown pigeon hunting season usually begins late in September. The close season always begins on the 1st of March each year. The iguana. These are large lizards. The bohemian species is now found only on Exuma, Andros, and Meguana. Their meat is tasty and rich in protein, so many are caught and eaten. The loggerhead and the hawksbill turtles. 
Both of these species were once plentiful, but many have been killed for their meat and their shells used to make jewelry. The hutia. The hutia is a rat-like rodent. It is found only in the Bahamas. It was thought that they had all died out or became extinct. But in 1965, a few hutiers were found on Planter Key. They were taken from there to Little Wax Key off Exuma, which is part of the Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park. Now, under the careful protection of the National Trust, the Hutia are increasing in numbers. The Bahama Parrot. These two were once plentiful, but are now rare. Columbus described great flocks of parrots when he arrived in 1492. Today, they are to be seen on Abaco and Great Anagua Islands. The Flamingo, a Large and beautiful bird, the flamingo is part of our national emblem. The world's largest breeding colony of West Indian flamingos, as many as some 50,000 birds, are found on the island of Great Inagua, part of Inagua National Park. The Fowl Snake and the Boar Constructor. These snakes are not poisonous, but they are often killed because they eat chickens and fowl. The pintail duck, the West Indian wrestling duck, these are some of the birds. The osprey, the white-tailed tropical bird, they can all be seen in the Bahamas. Protecting our endangered species is a very important aspect for us. The Bahamas has signed an international treaty known as CITES, which stands for Conservation of International Trade in Endangered Species. If any of the endangered species is taken from the Bahamas and imported into another country without a special permit, the animals will be taken away from the importer and returned to the Bahamas. This has been our lesson on protecting our land.